in engineering, okay, the, the requirement for a peer range is, uh, is something which is, uh, is there all over the world, in, in, of course, in different uh, names. But uh, in, in, in South Africa, I think for you, if you get a peer range, it's not that you are going to be successful or you, if I can put it in a nutshell, the, the peer range is just meant to recognize your effort towards engineering. It doesn't measure your success. It just shows that you are able to, to make engineering judgments, you can make good decisions and, and, and be, be a responsible engineer. But it doesn't guarantee your success. The, you can be a you can be a crook engineer even after you get your peer range. So it's nothing to do with your success. I think it's it it just open up, opens up avenues for you. You have connections and you are recognized. So it it just makes your your qualifications be 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 recognized. So that's that's the main important thing. But but when it comes to success, no, I don't really think it's uh, it's 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 related to success. Ultimately, I think it's a title. It's not, you do have to go through a whole qualification process. So maybe it is a qualification. Um, you, so the process now, from, from now until I get my PR range, I'll have to sign up with EXA, the Engineering Council of South Africa. And um, I'll have to have a mentor, um, a professional engineer. Um, and in the next five years, I'll have to have a range of experiences. Um, you, you need to have some experience on site. You have to um, have experience in the design office. Um, and they, you also need to show them at the end of that that your level of responsibility has steadily increased as well. Um, and ultimately, that, that's so that they know when they label you as a professional engineer, they know that you're competent enough to, to, to be able to sign off on, on designs and, and plans. Yeah. Okay, to take, get taken seriously, I think you need to get your PR inch. That uh, uh, typically, I'd say, would take about uh, five or so years. And um, that would uh, mean that you've got the necessary experience and the engineering judgment to be able to make calls such as um, just looking at a, at a structure or at a specific element and uh, saying, okay, this is the size of steel that needs to be put in there. Um, I, I think it would take roughly five or so years. Um, the minimum required, uh, the minimum amount of time that you can take is three years. But um, from what I've, I've heard and when I've spoken to people in industry, uh, it usually takes between five and up to even seven years to gain that, that much experience. Oh, I think you can definitely be a successful um, engineer without your PR inch. I've met some very great engineers out there. I think it's also a matter of, um, there's, there's a lot of um, like steps that you follow to get your PR inch and some people are, so, are really focused onto their work, you know. They, I guess they don't find the time to go through all that stuff. I believe if you've been working somewhere for, for quite a while and you've done some good, credible work, then that, the fact that you don't have a PRN shouldn't um, affect the decisions you make for like, the company. It shouldn't limit you in any way. I mean, if you've got the experience and you have, you have the knowledge, then I think you can make great decisions.